Hello, my dear class 10 students, welcome back. So uh, today we will continue with the part five for this chapter, carbon and its compound. And you can also refer page 58 to 78, okay? Now, uh, in the last class, we have discussed about the chemical properties of carbon. We have already finished this addition reaction as well as combustion reaction. So today we'll discuss about the third chemical property for carbon that would be oxidation reaction, okay? Oxidation reaction. Now, students, in the first chapter, in the chapter one chemical reaction and equation, you have already studied that oxidation is to do with adding, we add oxygen and then removal of hydrogen. Right, what happens in oxidation? There is an addition of oxygen and there is a removal of hydrogen in oxidation. Right, so now regarding this carbon, okay, regarding this carbon, one thing you have to remember under oxidation reaction is there will be a conversion of alcohol to acid, okay. There will be a conversion of alcohol to acid and what kind of acid we are discussing in this chapter? We are discussing about the carboxylic acid. Okay, so uh, in a simple way, let's do the, let's show you tr uh, true example, okay, true example. Now, uh, let's take any compound of alcohol, okay, let's take ethanol. So this is ethanol and now this is why we have studied in detail about the functional group, right? So this one, in ethane, we have an alcohol as a functional group, OH is alcohol, okay? Now, this goes, what we are going to do is, this is an alcohol, right? Alcohol, or it is an ethanol, okay? A compound of alcohol. Now, we'll react this one in the presence of alkaline, KMNO4. Okay, so we'll heat this one in the presence of al alkaline potassium permanganate, KMNO4. Now here, this alcohol will undergo oxidation reaction. That means what? This alcohol will undergo an addition of oxygen and removal of hydrogen, right? And who is helping? Who is the oxidizing agent? Who is helping this alcohol to remove hydrogen and adding oxygen? This alkaline KMNO4 is playing as an oxidizing agent, okay? Oxidizing agent. So the main goal is, see, we are trying to convert an alcohol into acid, right? So we have a compound of alcohol here. But we need an agent, okay? This one from alcohol, we cannot get directly acid. We need an agent, okay? We need an agent. So who is an agent here? An agent here is alkaline KMNO4, and that is potassium permanganate, clear? Now, we are hitting this one, and as a result, what we will get? We will get clear. So we will get ethanoic acid. So it has already been changed. Now we can see that there is an addition of oxygen, right? Oxygen has been increased. Here we have just one oxygen, clear. So this is the simple uh, concept for oxidation reaction for carbon. Okay, for carbon, we are converting alcohol to carboxylic acid. It has to undergo oxidation reaction. So we need an agent. An agent is alkaline KMNO4, clear and that is how we're getting this acid. So this is an oxidation reaction. Now we have the last type of the chemical reaction, okay, uh, ch chemical properties for carbon, uh, that would be substitution reaction. Okay, so my dear students, under the chemical properties of carbon, this would be the last one, okay, that would be substitution reaction. Now, from the word itself, okay, you have to focus here, substitution means we are going to replace. There is, this replacing is going to take place between an atoms and a group of atoms here. Clear. 
here there will be a replacing okay or we will say replacing or replacement would take place between atoms or group of atoms clear so let's show you through an example let's take a methane here and let's take here a chlorine so now why i'm taking a methane here okay now why i am taking a methane here is uh, if we react, okay, if we react any saturated hydrocarbon, saturated, this is a saturated, right? If you draw a structure for methane, then you'll get everything a single bond, okay? Now, when we react this saturated hydrocarbon with a halogen, okay, it will react very fast in the presence of a sunlight. Now, here the replacing will take place. Here the exchange would take place, okay? That's why we are saying it's a substitution reaction. And now, with the help of this sunlight, we are able to do this reaction. And this reaction is, let me tell you, very fast, okay? And in the previous one, in the last three uh, chemical properties, we have used a catalyst, right? But here, we are using a sunlight, okay? We are using a sunlight, to get a product for the replacement. So now what will happen here? So we'll get here. So students, we are getting chloromethane. Chloromethane. See, that's why I have already, uh, I, I already told you that uh, IUPAC name and functional groups are very important, right? So this CL is halogen. So I'm using it in the pref uh, prefix, okay? And now this CH3 is, C means one carbon, right? So it is mid, so we have chloromethane, and this is hydrochloric acid, clear? Your G means, it indicates gas, okay, gas. So students, this is all about substitution reaction. Now here, see, you have to know this concept. The name itself, the word itself plays a very important role. So substitution means there is a, a replacement is going to take place between an atoms or a group of atoms in a compound, okay? So that is all about the chemical properties of carbon. The, now uh, the next important topic would be uh, important compounds of carbon, okay? Okay, so my dear students, now this would be the second part, see, uh, in a division, we have already in this chapter, First, we have studied about hydrocarbon, and then we have studied about different type of hydrocarbon. And then we have studied about the versatile, the versatile nature of the carbon, right? And then we have already studied about the chemical properties. Now, this is the last part of the chapter, okay? In the last part of the chapter, we have important compounds. Important compounds of carbon, clear? We have important compounds of carbon. We have many important compounds of carbon, but as mentioned in your text, they have mentioned two compounds. That is ethanol and ethanoic acid. So we'll study about that in details, clear? So some important compounds of carbon. First one, as mentioned in your text, that is ethanol. Ethanol, clear? Now, before we start, this is the ethanol. Now, students, I'm sure now you're, uh, you know the importance of carbon already, right? See, carbon is very important. This chapter is also very long, and all the topics are very important. It's all different, right? So this ethanol is also a compound of carbon. And this ethanol, let's study the physical property, okay? Physical property. Now, ethanol formula is, this one, right? We have two carbon. OH means that's the alcohol. Clear? And students, if we have to draw the structure of uh, this ethanol, clear, this is the structure. Now the first physical property for ethanol would be it is a colorless liquid, right? Alcohol usually it is colorless in liquid, okay? This is a property of alcohol, right? So it is a colorless 
liquid. Okay, now the second property would be it has a burning taste. Okay, alcohol it has a burning taste. Burning taste. So I'm making it very simple for you, okay? Colorless liquid. You just imagine the alcohol, okay? Alcohol. Now, usually alcohol, it will be colorless naturally, okay? But if we add the flavors, if we add like different properties there, then the color would change, okay? Now, it, it boils at, or you can just write the boiling point, okay? Boiling point of alcohol would be 351 Kelvin K, okay? 351 Kelvin. Now, let's make it uh, the fourth point as the last point, okay? It is soluble in water. It is soluble in water. So, all the alcohol, right? Uh, it is mixed with water, clear? It is mixed with water. That's why we are saying that it is soluble in water. Okay, now we are done with the physical property. Let's discuss about the uses. Okay, uses of alcohol, ethanol. Uses. Now, the first use is as beverage. As beverage for making what? Beverage in uh, beer, wine, whiskey, rum. Clear? In all this production. Now it is present in all this beverage, alcoholic beverage. Now the second thing is it is used, this alcohol is also used as an antiseptic, okay? For medicine that means as an antiseptic. Clear. Now the third use to make it very simple, let's say it is used in making this chloroform. Okay. Chloroform. Now we have many uses. Okay, but I'm just writing the uh, the common one so that you get familiar with it. Okay. So this is all about the physical property and the uses of ethanol. The next we'll study about the chemical properties of ethanol. Okay, so my dear students, now we are going to study about the chemical properties, okay, of what? Of ethanol, of ethanol, clear? Now, the first property of uh, ethanol, let's make it very simple, we'll study about dehydration, okay? Now, first, let's understand this meaning. Dehydration means you all know, right? It means it's losing of water, okay? Losing of water. Now, we have here ethanol, okay? This is ethanol. Or this is alcohol, okay? We have here ethanol. How we will take out the water in ethanol? Clear? Now, I have already told you that alcohol, ethanol, it is soluble in water right that means there is a water in here we have hydrogen we have oxygen we have water here in ethanol then how are we going to release this uh, water okay then we need an acid we need an acid to take out okay to suck all the water out from the alcohol so what kind of acid is that concentrated h2so4 that means concentrated sulfuric acid. And see, we need a specific temperature, okay? You cannot decrease the temperature, you cannot increase the temperature. We need a specific temperature and that should be at 443 Kelvin. Clear? 443 Kelvin. And in exam, if, if they ask you, if they ask you, uh, apart from sulfuric acid, is there any other acid there where we can uh, suck the water out, okay? From the ethanol, then that would be Aluminum, ferric oxide, aluminum oxide at 623K, 623 Kelvin. That is the other option, okay? The, this is the other option. So now we are going to throw an acid in this alcohol to take the water out, right? So 
let's say that we have removed all the water, H2O, then what is left? What is left, students? See, we have one H already removed, right? We have one H already removed here. So all together now we have five and six H, right? In water, how many hydrogen we have? We have two hydrogen in water. And here we have six hydrogen, six minus two, four. This oxygen is already gone there. So now we have C2H4, clear? So what is C2H4? This is ethene, right? This is an alkene family, right? So now this is the process of dehydration. We use acid to suck the water out from ethanol, from alcohol. But you know, you have to understand this concept because in exam they can ask you a different question, uh, question like how you would uh, produce or how you would get an alkene from alcohol, right? Or how you will get an unsaturated hydrocarbon from an alcohol or ethanol, clear? So you keep all these things in mind. We are done with the dehydration part. Uh, in the next class, we'll continue with the, uh, the important compounds of carbon because we, all, we also have ethanoic as, uh, acid as well, clear? The next compound will be ethanoic acid and also we have to see how soap, right? The last topic would be how soap and detergent work, okay? So thank you so much students, see you in the next class.